Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. This was a six hours old neonat. It was sent to us for assessing the genitalia as after delivery they saw that the genitalia was ambiguous from outside and was sent to us to assess the genitalia to see the ovaries and testes to see the presence of uterus or prostate and lastly to exclude the adrenal abnormality as that was a suspected case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Unfortunately, there was no definite antenatal diagnosis of this case. So we had to go with the diagnosis after delivery. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see the longitudinal section of the right hypochondriac region showing the part of liver and the kidney. You can see a hypoechoic area here, superior to the kidney. This has an outer hypoechoic area, which is the cortex of the adrenal gland and internal hyperechoic medullary part. And the whole area is wrinkled and appears like a cerebral geriform pattern. So this type of geriform patterned, wrinkled, enlarged area superior to the kidney is nothing but the enlarged adrenal gland. Commonly we can see the adrenal gland in neonates during our ultrasound but that should not be as big as we can see here. We would go with measurement obviously. So here's the picture. This is the right lobe of liver. This is the right kidney. Make sure the renal parenchyma is echogenic and this is quite normal in early age and up to six years of age, the renal parenchyma may appear echogenic. So before making a diagnosis, try to be a little more careful. To diagnose renal parenchyma lesions before six years, we usually try to see more findings before telling it as an echogenic abnormal kidney. So this is the cerebral geriform pattern in large right adrenal gland. Again, another picture of the enlarged right adrenal gland. This is a transverse section where you can see the geriform pattern. Here is an oblique section where you can see the whole length of the adrenal gland, which is almost the same size of the right kidney. We have tried to give you some measurements of this gland and it is around 3.5 into 2.1 cm so it's really big. If any single limb of the adrenal gland is more than 4 mm it is usually considered as enlarged. We also have age wise chart which I will give you at the end of the video but in case of enlarged adrenal glands you really won't miss. Here we have put the color Doppler. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia may or may not show hyperemia. Now let's jump into the left side. Here you also can see the spleen and the left kidney and in between them there is again the gyriform pattern enlarged left adrenal. In case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia usually the left adrenal is bigger than the right one because it gets space. In case of right side there is liver which gives some restrictions to get enlarged but on left side it's quite easy to get enlarged. Here's the measurement. It's quite similar to the right one, 3.5 into 2 centimeter. And on color Doppler, these are the splenic vessels going to spleen. With same pair of sitting, the gland shows a little more vascularity than the right one. Now I can't show you the picture of the genitalia from outside because the patient party didn't allow. But if you search on Google writing congenital adrenal hyperplasia genitalia then you can see the picture and this is quite similar. We found an enlarged clitoris which was looking like a penis. So there was a confusion whether it's a penile structure or clitoris. If it was a penile part then we should get a urethra and we know that penis has three parts, two corpora cavernosa and one corpora spongiosum. So we try to search for them within this structure. But here we can see this is the enlarged clitoris. 
from this image it may be corpora cavernosa corpora spongiosum but we will see it on cross section and there was no urethra within this structure urethra was seen inferior to this structure on clinical examination here is another picture of the enlarged clitoris the structure is deep to the skin the penile parts are seen outside the skin surface This is the cross section of the clitoris and there is no corpora cavernosum or spongiosum developed within this structure. This is the view of the vaginal region which lies slightly inferior to the clitoris and you can see this is the vaginal canal filled with some fluid. So the canal is present. Let's see on real time. This is the cross section of the clitoris and this is the long section. It was a six hours old neonat. During our examination, there was oozing from the umbilical cord clump and the urinary bladder was empty. So, with our linear transducer, we couldn't able to visualize the uterus ovary or testis. So, the pelvic organs were difficult to evaluate at that time. Due to the neonatal condition, we actually couldn't allow the patient to stay on our center for this scan. Rather, we advise them to come next month so that we can evaluate the pelvic organs and confirm the presence of uterus, ovaries or testes. So in summary, there is bilateral diffusely enlarged and wrinkled adrenal glands with maintained hypoechoic cortex and hyperechoic medulla similar to the cerebral gyrian sulci forming the cerebriform pattern. There was partly fused labia majora with rugi which is a feature of clinical examination that we have done before the ultrasound procedure and we couldn't find any testicular structures within those scrotum-like labial parts. So this feature is concluded as a case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Now the take home message. If a single limb of adrenal gland is more or equal to 4 mm, it is considered as enlarged. The cerebriform appearance that we have shown is caused by the hypertrophied adrenal gland folding back upon itself. The left adrenal gland is usually larger than the right one due to the potential space for the right adrenal gland being smaller due to the liver. The presence of normal adrenal glands do not exclude congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Here we have given you a chart that has been taken from the Atlas of Ultrasound Measurements of Goldberg, which is an excellent book for learning any ultrasound measurements. This may be helpful for you to keep as this type of cases are not commonly seen in our practice. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and try to follow us on other social platforms. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.